that somebody sent me over said you needed a hand finding some books. Oh, absolutely, I'd be able to help you. I'd love to help. Yeah, not a worry. I mean, who, who, are, you, who are you looking at books for? Is it for, for yourself or somebody else? Your kids and yourself. Okay, yeah. Um, have you tried looking at the, the child section, the, the, um, the classics? Yeah, you're just sort of starting to get them into reading their own books. That sounds fantastic. All right, well, let me uh, let me run a few titles by you. you. Have you checked the popular classic section? Oh, no, it's just at the front here. Yes, a lot of people walk straight past it. Let me, um, first of all, how many kids here have you got? Three? Four? Oh, okay, so there's three that are reading. Would you like to maybe get something that you could read? How old's the youngest? It's important to fuel their imaginations as much as you can. Would you like me to maybe sort out something that you could read to them? Excellent. Yeah, I've got I've got something just in mind for a three-year-old. Let me think. Something that you could read to them. How about this? It's a collection of, of Roald Dahl stories. All three of them, anyway. Three of the best ones, the most the most popular ones. The BFG, which is a, they're, they're making a film, they're adapting uh, the book to a film soon, and obviously Matilda there as well, which is quite a popular title. Uh, you might have even seen the movies. Let's have a look here. That's the, uh, the BFG. Okay. Again. Let's, um, let's see if I can to fuel their imagination, to fuel that uh, young one's imagination, get them into reading early. It's in here somewhere. Can't kind of run away. There's George's Marvelous Medicine. The BFG, here's Matilda. Oh, they're brilliant stories. Some of my absolute favourites. convince themselves their child has qualities of genius. Well, there's nothing very wrong with this at all. It's the way of the world. It is only when the parents begin telling us about the brilliance of their own revolting offspring that we start shouting, bring us a pace and we're going to be sick. School teachers suffer a good... Yes, you'd like to add that to the pile? Oh, there's such brilliant stories. They're so captivating. Even I might even go back and read this book eventually. Fantastic. Recently, I read George's Marvelous Medicine. Oh, just so quirky and fun. Absolutely. I'll uh, put that in your trolley. Okay, who's next? Who, who else are you borrowing some books for? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, you know, someone, who's, someone who... Of, of her age, um, I mean, nine-year-olds, uh, at nine, at nine, ten, okay, I would probably suggest to you something else that uh, uh, they've adapted for film as well, which is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Of course, you've heard of it again. This is, these are all from the classics. That's this one here. Now, we have other editions of this, but this one is the one I would uh, suggest borrowing out today. Uh, the reason I say that is for, for someone your daughter's age and nine or ten. Um, this one here is actually uh, nicely illustrated as well. Um, let's have a look here. Let's see if I can find some of my favourite illustrations. You'll, you see there, it's just 
it's got some beautiful little 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 scenes there that uh, your child can follow along with. Let's have a look. Behind the Witcher in the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, illustrated by Pauline Baines. Okay. Chapter one. Lucy looks into a wardrobe. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to, to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country, ten miles from the nearest railway station and two miles from the nearest post office. He had no wife, and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called Mrs. McCready and three servants. Their names were Ivy, Margaret and Betty, but they do not come into the story much. He himself was a very old man with shaggy white hair, which grew over most of his face, as well as his head. And they liked him almost at once. But the first evening, when he came out to meet them at the front door, he was so odd-looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him. And Edmund, who was the next youngest, wanted to laugh, and had to keep pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. As soon as the you would like that one. Honestly, you can't go wrong with C.S. Lewis. Such beautiful books, such beautiful stories. I'll add that to your trolley. And who's next? Oh, 13, 13, 14 year olds. It's quite uh, quite an exciting so exciting time in their in their um, literary lives. Um, if I, I mean, have they read Harry Potter yet? Uh, it had to be in there. Let me have a. Uh, let me have a quick look here. You can't beat the first book, and regardless of whether or not they've uh, they've seen the movie or not, um, there's plenty still in the book that they haven't heard about. And they obviously, they changed a, a, a fair bit that was in the book uh, for the for the film. So um, I, I was actually quite surprised when when I read through this again after seeing the movies. Let's have a look here. Fantastic. And again, they're, they're just quirky and, and funny 
won't strangle me. But I have to put him out of his misery. I like my dad. He takes me fishing. He gives me arm wrestles in front of the fire on a cold night. He plays Scrabble instead of watching the news. He tries practical jokes on me. And he keeps his promises, always. But he has two faults, bad faults. One is to do with flies. He can't stand them. If there's a fly in the room, he has to kill it. He won't use a fly spray because of the ozone layer, so he chases them around with a fly swat. He races around the house, swiping and swatting like mad thing. He won't stop until the fly is flat, squashed, squished. Sometimes still squirming on the end of the fly swat. Yes, he's a dead eye. He hardly ever misses. When his, when his old fly swat was almost worn out, I bought him a nice new yellow one for his birthday, but it wasn't yellow for long. It soon had bits of fly smeared all over it. It's funny, the different colours that squashed flies have inside them. Mostly it's black and brown, but often... Often there are streaks of runny red stuff, and sometimes bits of blue. The wings flash like diamonds, if you hold them up to the light, but mostly the wings fall off, unless they're stuck to the swat with a bit of old squashed in it. <laughs> I'll stop, I'll stop, it's okay. Would you, would you like me to add that one to the pile as well? They're not all like that, but they do have, as I said, I, I like to use the word quirky, but I mean, it's teenage humour. Yeah, not a worry at all. I'll put it in the, in the trolley. And lastly, you said you were looking for something for yourself, is that right? Yeah, excellent, I think I've got something in mind. Are you looking for a more of a serious novel? Or something uh, with a bit of comedy. Okay. A little bit, little bit of comedy, a little bit of laughter. How about a whole lot of laughter? Again, it's another classic that they made a film about, but no one liked the film. You know what I'm talking about? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Unfortunately, the only copy we have left is the film adapted book, but it's exactly the same. Quirky, it's my favourite word. <laughs> 